Hello and welcome to CBT Nuggets Cisco Switch Certification Series. My name is Jeremy Charlie and I'll be hanging out with you throughout this series. And what I want to do in this opening nugget of the entire thing is just talk about the series as a whole. Talk about Cisco certification, the new CCNP certification, what that means, what's the differences from the old one, why did Cisco do this? And then I want to address a big question that I'm sure some of you have, which is, well, what's new in this Cisco Switch series that is different from the Cisco BCMSN? And then Finally, I want to talk about some of the, the, the best things that you can do to get the most from this series. Talk a little bit about building a home lab and all of that. So let's get going. So let me start off by talking about Cisco certification. Uh, Cisco certification, first off, if you are not interested in it, I think you should be, <laughs> just because it's one of those super valuable things that you can do for your career. Now, I'm not saying you will get certified and suddenly businesses will be calling you, somehow they got your number, and uh, and you're just going to, no, no, I'm sorry, $500,000 a year is not enough. Uh, I, I would also like 100 vacation days a year. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's nothing like that. Um, but it is definitely a huge advantage because Cisco is one of the only certification companies that incents, uh, like provides incentives for organizations to hire you, uh, so, such that th as organizations hire different Cisco certified people at different levels, they move up in their partner level with Cisco and they get different discount levels off of Cisco gears, some of which can be very significant to an organization. So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's not only uh, great for your career, but it's, it's demanded by organizations. It's in high demand. And there's just there's just an aura about Cisco certification. Uh, you know, when you're in a technology world, even if you, you just have a CCNA, the, the kind of entry level certification, uh, even with the Microsoft folk, if you're talking to Microsoft people and you're like, oh yeah, I'm Cisco certified, there's just kind of like the, there's just like a, ooh, wow, really? How, when would you get that? How how'd you do it? It's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of a, I don't know. It's it's an unknown territory for most people, so it's sort of um, uh, just got that aura about it of you must really know what you're doing. Now I'm not saying if you talk to the general public, like you're in uh, Walmart or something, and you go, yeah, I'm a Cisco certified, and they're gonna go, uh, okay, uh, you know, people would 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 uh, recognize Microsoft certifications far better uh, to the layman. I'll, I'll say that. So I just want to talk about flyby updates to the Cisco certification track. It's in high demand, as I mentioned. 2007 is when the CCNA program went through a major review. And you might be, you might be thinking, well, well, it's, you know, we're in 2010, 11, and beyond. I mean, why are we talking 2007? I would say 2007 really marked when Cisco got serious about their certification program. Not that they, uh, again, don't hear me wrong, not that they haven't been serious about it, but it's, it's uh, at that point became a really challenging and really real world style exam. And it kind of marked a major renewal that they went through through all their certifications. Um, and that's when they, you know, 2007 is when they broke it into two separate certifications for the CCNA, which is the CCENT and the CCNA. It became much more difficult because Cisco's logic is, if you don't know how to do this in the real world, then you shouldn't really pass the exam. And so you're seeing simulations take on much more complexity than previous. I mean, seriously, I, I got CCNA certified in 2000, 2000. 2000? Has it been that long? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it. when I took the exam, literally, well, I'll, I'll just say this. I got my CCNA and CCNP, all of them, in a month. Uh, it, just, just because I'm a good book studier and I, I could memorize good facts. But I will tell you, back in 2000, when I got my CCNP, if you threw me into a, a closet and said, oh, can, can you set up this network with a WAN link and uh, just basic EIGRP routing, I would have said, uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't. I, 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 I can do it on paper. Sure, I can draw some diagrams. Um, but yeah, so, so nowadays it's not like that. It's very real world. Um, and they're doing the same thing with, uh, with the CCNP. So let me, let me talk a little bit about... Oh, I, I mentioned at the bottom, in 2008, the CCNA specialties came out. That's the CCNA voice, CCNA security, all those kind of things. Um, and recently, more recently, I'll say 2009-ish, 10-ish, is when they revised the CCNP to be three exams. So let me talk about that. So most recently, Cisco has done some major revisions to the CCNP certification track. They did it based on a lot of feedback, a lot of real-world meetings where they met with organizations, seeing what people expected of the CCNP and all that kind of thing. And one of the, the biggest things that they did, and I, and I applaud them for it, I think it's great, they took the CCNP certification from four exams in the previous 
rendition, down to three exams. They boiled it down to Cisco Switch, Cisco Route, and T-Shoot, which is troubleshooting, which is a huge advancement in my opinion because over time the CCNP got muddy. And what I mean by that is uh, new technologies came out like voice over IP and new security advancements. And, and you know, it's, it's natural to say, well, you know, the normal person should know about this. This is, it's good to know about voice over IP. It's good to know about security and all. The, and so they kind of started splicing all of these pieces into there. And before long, you had, you had uh, certifications in CCNP, or I should say exams in the CCNP, like ONT, Optimizing Network uh, optimizing, I can't even remember what it stands for, ONT, it was optimizing network something. Um, and essentially it was an entire certification mainly on quality of service, which when people took the CCVP certification, they went through an entire certification called quality of service and they would go, this is exactly the same stuff I learned in the CCNP. Why am I having to take you know this, this whole thing all over again? What, what's the scoop? And Cisco says, you're right. Why, why are we making you take that? So they took the CCNP and this revision back to where it came from, switching and routing, the core of it all. And then, of course, now you have an exam based on troubleshooting. Putting And, and I would say troubleshooting is the most real world of all simply because it takes everything that you know from Cisco Route and Cisco Switch and puts it together into a real world bucket makes stuff explode and then says, fix it, which I'm telling you, after being in Cisco a while, that's about as real world as it gets because stuff, stuff like that happens all the time as, as a consultant's role. Uh, so, so that's what the CCNP is. Uh, it is. It is revised. It is uh, a new track. However, when you're thinking, you know, is, is everything changed? For instance, Cisco Route, the, the CCNP exam, used to be called BSCI. And, uh, and people, people would say, well, what, what did you change? What did you add? And, and honestly, Cisco's response is not much. What we really did was take stuff out. We took out the stuff that wasn't directly related to routing and, and routing protocols and you know things like ISIS, routing protocols that are just rarely used and people didn't need to know about. Same thing with Cisco Switch. Well, what did you change in Cisco Switch from BCMSN? Cisco's response is, well, uh, nothing, really. I mean, it's, it's really this, the same certification. It's, it's just focused on Switch technology. So, so the big thing that I want to convey to you is you know, what's new in Cisco Switch compared to BCMSN? Well, not much. I did some enhancements here and there, but really the core of it all is BCMSN. So now let me put all those pieces together into a how to get this the most from this series. Cause I, and I'm sure many of you are, are thinking, okay, so if BCMSN is the same as Cisco Switch, what about the exam? Is the exam very different and all of that? And it, what I can say with the non-disclosure agreement in mind is no. Uh, when, I, when I took the Cisco Switch exam, it was the exact same exam as BCMSN. And you know, mind you, there's a big pool of questions and all of that, but the questions were just the same BCMSN questions, just with Cisco Switch titles. So, uh, so, so no, the exam is not super different, super hard, any, anything like that. It really has just been renamed and repackaged as Cisco Switch. So, putting this all together, the best thing that I could do was to take the same BCMSN series and just add pieces to it, which if you've looked at the series outline, you've got that idea. It's, it's really the BCMSN CCNP series with four or five different uh, nuggets added to just add you know some updates, some new things that have happened since I think I, I uh, set up and recorded BCMSN in 2000. 2008 ish time frame so it's it's not even that old so um, so yeah it's just it's it's an enhanced version so when you're going through this you know number one thing that you can do to uh, to get the most from from the nuggets is to go through them again and again and again it's one of the best things about CBT nuggets is you can watch them a million times uh, and solidify the information versus you know just you know hearing somebody lecture one time at a conference or something like that. Uh, so as you go through, take you know one thing I do it helps me is I just jot down key key points that I hear. I, I like using Microsoft OneNote. I've fallen in love with that program. I think OneNote is by far the best program Microsoft has ever made. Um, and so I, I use that to jot down my notes and just put them in little bullet points format so I can uh, remember them. And then of course the biggest thing 
is to build a lab. Now, when I when I re-recorded Cisco Route, you know, a lot of question emerged about that was, uh, well, why did you do such a major overhaul to Cisco Route versus Cisco BSCI? Well, Cisco Route was really a, a test for me because I really wanted to do something where I could put in labs and, and set up lab environments, and I used GNS3 with this Cisco Route series to do that. Um, well, with, with switches, GNS3 does not emulate switches, or at least not well. Uh, so, so what I would suggest is you can build a fairly inexpensive lab where you'll be able to try just about everything I do in this series uh, using, I would suggest, a Cisco 3550 and a 2950. Just two devices. Don't, don't really need any more than that. The reason I suggest both of those guys is the 3550 will, will definitely be the more expensive piece. That is your layer 3 switch. That's where you can test your inner VLAN routing, setting up routing protocols on the switch, you know, using essentially all the layer three functions of switch and multi-layer switching that we're going to talk about in the series. The 2950 can just add, act as a separate switch um, that, that you can use VLAN trunking on, you can set up VTP, you can do VLAN pruning, test your VLANs, all that kind of stuff um, between, between the two different devices. Now I chose those models uh, simply because they're no longer manufactured by Cisco. Uh, they are end of life, which makes them much cheaper and, and much uh, more easily found on eBay and things like that. Um, second off, they, they are fairly modern code and Cisco is still releasing new iOS versions for them. Uh, so you can always get the, the latest and greatest code for them. Um, are there cheaper ways to go? Yeah, yeah, totally. I would say you could, you know, you could go with like a 2900 XL. You can get those for like 20, 30 bucks off of eBay, um, which have almost everything, almost the same command set as uh, the 2950. Um, you could even go with uh, the good old, uh, what were the 1900 series, 1912 and the 1924. Um, those were the original, the 10 megabit per second uh, guys. You could probably get those for five bucks uh, plus shipping. Um, so, so nonetheless, there there are cheaper ways to go, but that's that's what I used, and that's what I I, uh, I really liked. Now, of course, the last two pieces, and I say this at every single one of the series that I do, the best way to get the most from this series is to dig deeper and fall in love. Meaning, as I go through the, the uh, series, I'm sure there's things that are going to pop up in your mind, and you're going to, oh, well, I wonder if you do that, you know, what would happen? Or I wonder, you know, you're going to have questions and going further and things like that. And I would say, do it, dig deeper. That's, that's how you're going to be like, oh, that's awesome. And, and make your, create your own notes, create your own experiences with it. Um, that's how you really, really solidify this and understand the technology. You know, and and uh, I won't get I I know some of these uh, intros to the series. I've I've talked on and on about how uh, I, when I first got into Cisco in general, I really didn't like it uh, just because it was totally different. You know, I was a Microsoft guy with my Windows 2000 uh, certification, and and you know I was like, oh, group policies and all of this are the way to go, and and uh, you know. It wasn't until I really understood Cisco that I was like, Cisco is is awesome, and I it's almost impossible for me to do Microsoft stuff because I'm just like, this is this is so lame compared to Cisco. I would love to be sitting in a closet setting up a, a new router or an ASA firewall than than uh, setting up user accounts or something like that. It's just it's it's what you what you understand fully is what you uh, fall in love with. So that's the the dig deeper and fall in love are so closely linked that the people that are best at their jobs are the people that love it and they go home and oh man I, I should show you a picture um, I don't have a little webcam right now but maybe maybe I will later in the series I, I have this home lab um, that I keep revising and I my most recent revision is uh, I went with a less is more theme and my home lab I should I should bring up a picture hang on hang on one second Okay, there we go. I, I just grabbed uh, I grabbed my cell phone and took a picture of this. Now this I, I have to I have to say I'm very proud. This is actually messy right now because I was using some of these. You see these little cables that were drooped over here. Uh, I was using those guys for some uh, uh, some lab stuff and some testing that I was doing. But but my, my my new theme for my home lab is less is more. You can see I've got my incoming DSL connection right here. Comes over here to this UC520. Oh, moment of silence for the UC520. 
Okay, there it was. That device is the most awesome device I've ever seen in my life. It's it's a, a voice over IP uh, management system running Call Manager Express. It has Unity Express in there. This this uh, above it, it, oh, by the way, it does routing, VPN, blah, blah, blah. You can see this is my Edge Firewall, the ASA5505. And then this is my SAN. I have a little iOmega, a uh, couple terabyte SAN that I'm using for VMware ESX servers. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome because it all fits on the top shelf and it's quiet. Uh, my wife walked into the office and uh, and she goes uh, she goes. This